Your Dog's Friend is a nonprofit 501c3 whose mission is to keep dogs out of shelters by educating and supporting their humans. We promote positive methods of training and behavior modification through stress-free methods. As part of that mission, we offer free webinars like the one you're about to watch. If you like the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you will be notified when future videos are posted. We also would appreciate it if you can make a tax-deductible donation to support our mission of providing stress-free dog education and resources. A link to donate is in the description below, along with links to our website and other resources to stress-free training. Enjoy the webinar. Today's webinar is presented by Susan Sanderson and Marnie Montgomery with Joyful Dog. Joyful Dog founder and lead trainer, Marnie Montgomery is a certified professional dog trainer, level four Pat Miller certified trainer, certified Tellington T-Touch practitioner, and a certified fear-free trainer. Marnie's particular areas of interest include leash skills, connected walking, canine cognition, and supporting and helping reactive and fearful dogs and their people. Susan Sanderson is a level three Pat Miller certified trainer and Karen Pryor Academy certified training partner. She has competed in agility, nose work, and herding with her dog Falco. She volunteers at the Animal Wel Welfare League of Arlington as a foster dog behavior caseworker. Now I'll turn it over to Marnie and Susan. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Wow, there are tons of people here. We are really excited to, um, to uh, be working with you all over the next couple of hours. But um, let's just start off. Marnie, do you wanna say anything to anybody before we get started? <laughs> just that I'm thrilled to see so many people or at least people's avatars on screen yes. and um, really looking forward to um, playing attention games with you. Um, yeah. Super. Okay. Should we get started? Let's dive in. Yeah. The first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to, let me just, let me just say a couple of words about how, how we're going to work on this. We're going to talk a little bit of, about attention for a few minutes, um, Marnie and I, and then we're going to go into, um, some demos and you know videos showing you some attention games things that we particularly like to work um, on things that we found are really um, successful and so um, but just the first few minutes are just going to be us talking about what's attention why do you need it what's it good for that sort of stuff so okay so i think the first thing we're going to talk about is um what exactly is attention <laughs> So um, it's basically it's basically the, the, the kind of attention that we're going to be talking about today is um, voluntary and mutual. And by that, what we mean is, you know, we're going to be teaching our dogs that um, them offering it on their own uh, is uh, really valuable. They're going to get lots of reinforcement for that. Um, and here's the amazing thing. Us humans get reinforcement when our dogs check in with us, when our dogs connect with us. So we really want this to be a mutual behavior. Um, a lot of times we think of it as, you know, our dogs are doing something and we're just, we're asking them to do something or we're telling them to do something. Um, this is, we're going to look at it today as, you know, something that both ends of the leash you're doing, or, you know, both, both animals are, are doing. Um, so one thing I, I, I want to add talking about it being voluntary is that um, we're, we're going to be talking a little bit also about how our dogs need to be comfortable in the environment before they can pay attention to us, before they can make that connection with us. Um, and that's, you'll, you know, you've probably had the experience of asking your dog to do something and they're like busy kind of scanning the environment. Um, but that's, that's fine, you know? Sometimes we need to let them kind of scan the environment a bit, give them a chance to, you know, sniff a little bit and then um, reward them for that um, chosen um, check-in. Um, and, uh, 
basically we're going to be looking at things that we can have our dog do and things that we can do as well. So again, like I said, there's, there's, there's two parties to this. It's not just, uh, it's not just all about our dog. So, okay, Marnie. All right. So we want to take a look at what attention looks like. And I, we tend to think of attention as being, so I'll go to the last item on the list first. Um, <laughs> we tend to think of attention as being all about eye contact. And eye contact is a fabulous kind of attention. And in my house, that's how my dogs ask me to open the door, get something out from under the couch. Um, you know, they absolutely have come to understand that eye contact is a great way to express their needs and to say please. But the big part of attention is um, being present. Um, our dogs being present to us, which doesn't always mean that they're boring eye holes in our forehead, um, as well as our being present to them. When our dogs are giving us attention, we want to be there receiving that attention and returning it. So I'm going to tell a story on myself. Um, actually, Susan was present at the time too. Um, we took um, our, our dogs up to um, a workshop in upstate New York, and we were working on um, a way of working with dogs that really included our dogs offering voluntary attention as the key to begin working together. And um, I was naively waiting for my dog who at the time he was 11 or 12. So he was a little stiff. So looking up was not an easy, always easy or comfortable thing for him to do. Um, so I was waiting, standing next to my dog for probably was 10 minutes when the person who was leading the workshop called from way across the other side of a three quarter acre field, Marnie. He's been paying attention to you for 10 minutes. <laughs> I was like, but he's not looking at me. And her response was, well, ask him if he's available to you. So I looked down at him and I said his name and he looked and was like, yeah, <laughs> I've been waiting on you. So we, um, that, was, that was a fabulous lesson for me to be aware of the ways that we and our dogs give one another attention, the ways in which we are present to each other that don't look like the postcards um, and that those are real and we really wanna take advantage of that. And then I'm just doing this list totally backwards. So the, um, my last item is the first on the list, which is orientation. The exercises we'll be doing today, especially at first, they can definitely turn into eye contact exercises, but we really start with our dogs simply orienting to us. You'll see that in some of the videos that we show you, and um, you'll see that in some of the demos that our fabulous volunteers will be doing. Okay, Susan. Cool. Take it away. So the question comes up, I think sometimes with people is, why, why have attention? I mean, why, do we, why do we want to develop it? What is it good for? And of course, um, we always say absolutely everything. <laughs> um, we, we believe and we hope at the end of you know, our time with you that you will believe as well that um, it really is um, a core foundation behavior because uh, in, in most, most of the times when we're working with our dogs or even if we're just hanging out with our dogs, um, uh, you know, we, we, really want, we really want to have some connection with them and, and, and some sense that they are attending to us. But you know, for specifics, it's like, you know, uh, it, is a, it is a foundation behavior, attention and connection for things like come when called, recalling your dog, um, if you don't have a dog who is just kind of used to keeping you on their radar, um, teaching a come when called or using a come when called is going to be really, really difficult. Um, and the same with walking nicely on a leash. Uh, if you ever take um, a leash walking class with Marnie and I, <laughs> you will hear us say oh, probably almost every week, leash walking is all about attention. 
there happens to be this piece of cloth or fabric or leather or whatever between you and the dog. But if your dog isn't connected to you, and importantly too, if you're not connected to your dog, you're gonna, you're gonna struggle. Both, both of you are gonna struggle. Um, but I'll also say that um, because I, I do a fair amount of you know, dog sports, it is a foundation behavior for doing dog sports. You really don't want to be, you know, working in agility or working in rally or anything like that and begging your dog to look at you, saying their name over and over again, you know, just sort of pleading with them to connect with you. You want that to be a behavior that is installed on board, kind of working, you know, working most of the time, let's, let's say. Um, and, uh, I would even say that it's that it's great for even if you're just hanging out with your dog, you know, if you're sitting at Starbucks and you and your dog are hanging out, they, you know, you basically want them to be able to scan the environment, but also stick with you, kind of hang with you, you know, be aware of what's going on, but still think to themselves, I'm with my person. It's no different than if you went and sat and had coffee with a friend. Um, you know, you would expect them to be there with you, paying attention to you, keeping in connection with you. So, and so this is, this is what we hope for our dogs. And this is what we hope for our relationship between us um, and, and our dogs. So, um, and I'll just add one more little thing that I want to, before I throw it back to Marnie, um, I always encourage people, um, I think I mentioned earlier that, that it's, that you know we're going to be reinforcing our dogs for their attention to us but their attention to us is also very reinforcing to us so it really is like a two-way street yeah. i also want to encourage people to think in terms of how incredibly valuable um your attention is your charm is to your dog using your charm i, I mean that just, as soon as we start encouraging people to do that, folks that we work with, man, we see, we see a dog's eyes light up, you know, it's just like, oh my God, my human is kind of flirting with me a little bit. This is awesome. Um, so I'll just throw that out there to keep in your heads <laughs> for a while. So <laughs> I think we'll see some charm today too. So. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. We have very, many charming humans. We do. <laughs> Okay, so one question might be, how do we build attention? Um, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this concept. We set up the environment so that our dog is likely to choose to offer attention. And what does that mean? Do we plant new trees? Do we build a fence? Um, you know, in the moment, we might choose to be in a less distracting place. We could start playing this indoors. Um, I love playing attention games indoors. Um, and indoors, there are not as many other things that my dog might choose to interact with as there are outdoors. So that's choosing and setting up the environment so that he's gonna think, oh, it really makes sense to pay attention to my person. We also want to make attention um, pay off for our dogs. So we want to reinforce generously. Um, so there's a smart aleck answer to the next two questions. What is reinforcement and what is punishing? But it's also true. Our dogs have their own list of what's reinforcing and what they don't care for, what, what they experience to be punishing. It may not be the same as the list that, you know, we've read in books or online or, um, you know, our, our friends and neighbors have told us. So we need to figure out what our dogs care about. Food is usually a great reinforcer, especially if it's really good food. Um, I had a shepherd mix who liked the same um, imported sharp cheddar cheese that I did. Um, we both found it highly reinforcing and it was great to um, build good behaviors with him. Um, play, uh, where we invite our dogs into our space, you'll see a little of that today. That for many dogs is really reinforcing. Um, what's punishing? Anything our dog doesn't like. Let's say we're playing attention games and we just all of a sudden stop. We just disengage. For many dogs, that's massively punishing because, hey, we were just having a great time together. What happened? 
So, um, so we want to negotiate those things so that we don't inadvertently make things bad for our dogs. We want to make attention great. We want to help them ease in and ease out of it, maybe providing an alternative when we're done with the game. Um, and we just want to watch, it's our dog offering that happy rubber dog, waggy body language that we love to see. All right. Okay. Susan, anything to add before we move to our next section? I don't think so. Um, okay. But should I say something about what our next section is, or do you want to do that? Well, let me say something about it, and then okay. you can dive in. So our next section will be um, demonstrations and play along. Um, <laughs> yes. We invite you to get your dog get some fabulous treats. If you use a clicker, get a clicker. If you don't use a clicker, no problem. You'll be in great shape anyway. And feel free to play along at home. You'll have opportunities to ask questions after the demos. And in fact, we wanted to take about five minutes now uh, to um, address some of the questions that may have popped up in the chat box, or if you have a burning question, this is a great time to pop it in the chat box as well. So while people have a moment to get their dog um, and their treats, actually five moments, we'll take a look at questions. Just one little logistical thing. Um, and this may actually be a question for Catherine. Our first demo person, is, let me find it, find it, find it. Our first demo person is Pam um, with Fender. Pam, could you raise your hand? And then I think Catherine will be able to make you visible. That would be great. But if everybody else, get your dogs, get your treats. And um, let's take a look at some questions. I think Nicole is also wrangling questions. Are there any hot questions, Nicole, that we need to take a look at? Um, looks like the first one we have is about a teenager, a nine month puppy who seems to have a lot of energy looking for trouble. And they're <laughs> thinking maybe their puppy wants their attention. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great catch. Um, a lot of the behaviors that we don't care for. Um, usually they result in us giving our dogs immediate attention um, to, to stop those behaviors. And so our dogs are really smart critters. And so they come to figure out, oh, when I do this thing, I get my person's attention right away. And then there was a question. Um, I actually think Susan kind of went on to answer this and um, a participant sort of answered it really nicely as well. But someone asked, uh, what is attention if not eye contact? And another participant um, chimed in with, they can be aware of you and ready to listen to you, even if they're not giving you eye contact. And I think Susan, you kind of touched on the um, general being in connection with each other. But if you had anything else to add to that, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I will sort of steal something. We'll just keep going back and forth. Here. I'll actually steal something I think that, that Marnie mentioned, which was, you know, it's like, um, generally, I might ask my dog for, you know, if I'm sort of testing it, you know, do I do I have my dog's connection? Do I have my dog's attention? I might test it very simply by just, um, you know, asking for a very simple behavior, maybe a hand target, or just maybe looking down at them. Do they look back up at me um, or do they move towards me? Um, you know, can I, can I ask them, can I ask them to do something? And they're like, yep, gotcha. I'm totally here with you. Um, some reason I'm, I'm reminded of this thing. Um, and I hope I'm going to tell this, the story correctly and, and I'll do it really quickly. But um, someone once uh, told me a story about um, assuming that, we have someone's attention or assuming that, you know, and, and this is just for humans, but I, but I think it applies for dogs too. So let's say you're working on your computer and your, your spouse walks into the room and just starts talking. And then you can hear, and you can kind of hear them in the background, wah, 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 wah. And, um, 
And then you can hear that they're getting a little irritated and you realize, oh God, they thought I was going to like stop what I was doing and maybe pay attention to them or something, you know, but maybe if they had kind of checked in with you a little bit, you know, that they're, that they, they wouldn't have gotten irritated and made an assumption that, that you were just automatically paying attention to them. So that's a, that's a good question about sort of, you know, making sure that, that, that you have some connection by, you know, maybe asking for a, a little behavior or uh, just something real simple. Marnie, do you want to, do you want to? Um, so, yeah. yeah. So in the example that I gave of, you know, my dog kind of standing next to me for 10 minutes, you know, thinking, well, maybe we're going to do something. Um, I, um, I hesitate to say this because we can so often just repeat our dog's name and teach them to ignore it. But all I did is I said his name once and he looked up at me like, yeah, I've been waiting to do something. Yeah. Um, so his choice to remain with me when he had the option of leaving, um, he was, I'm not sure he was even on a leash, but he certainly was on a loose leash. Um, the fact that he remained with me was, was a good indication that I was, um, definitely on his radar and then checking by saying his name. We, uh, many of us have prompts like a kissy noise or, you know, a gentle hand clap, um, you know, is also a way to check, you know, um, in that moment, uh, do we have our dog's brain? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have actually gotten a lot of questions that I'm going to kind of work on compiling and maybe we would be better to address some of them in a upcoming section. If you wanted to get rolling with the demos or let me know if you want more questions. <laughs> um, let's take one more question and then roll into the demos. Yeah. All right. So um, one of our friends has written, my puppy has crazy energy, more than I've ever seen. Can attention games help with this? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, is it mine? <laughs> I, no, I, I mean, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. That was, that was my answer too. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I have a, I, I will just share with you. <laughs> I have a, a, a seven month old who's about to be eight month old puppy and um, that I did not plan on getting. And he's a herding dog, lots of energy, lots of, you know, let's do this, let's do that. Da, 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 da. And I mean, I've been working on this stuff, the stuff that you'll see here today. I've been working on this stuff with him since day one. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I, Marnie had a puppy about a year and a half ago and I, you know, same breed actually. <laughs> And, um, and I think probably report the same thing as well. So absolutely. And in fact, um, you'll see in the uh, video demos, he's, um, um, he is a fence jumper. He can easily jump a six foot fence, but in the, um, uh, video demo that you'll see, I'm working with him off leash because the attention game is more engaging for him than jumping my fence. Mm -hmm. So Yes, and I will be in in some of my videos. You'll in two of my videos. You'll you'll see my um young puppy. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This, and yeah, it's great for puppies. Great mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started with the demos. Um, Pam, I have found you, um, but I guess let's take a look at the first game, and then I'll make your I'll ask you to turn on your video cam so that we can all enjoy your work with Fender. Um, but first, I just wanted to give you an alert. Um, we're going to start by looking at a game called Look Up, Look Down. Um, some of you may be familiar with the work of Leslie McDevitt. She, uh, boy, she, was, she was several years ago, maybe, maybe even as many as 10, she came out with a great DVD that had um, what she called uh, pattern games on it. And they are all games uh, like the ones you'll see today to build your dog's choice to give attention. A couple of things about the pattern games, when we create a structure for our dogs to work in, um, we get really, I think, increasingly reliable behavior because they don't have to um, wonder what are we doing? They're like, I've got this reliable pattern, this works in this situation. 
Um, so the first game we're going to be looking at is one of her pattern games. She also encourages uh, us to freestyle, us not being just Susan and me, but all of us who use her pattern games to adjust them to suit your needs and your dogs, which I think is fabulous. Um, so she is one of the many giants on whose shoulders we, um, we rest our work, and you'll be seeing work from, from several of them today. In the look up, look down game, you wait for your dog to look up towards you. And if that doesn't start, um, we have some ways to jumpstart it. Uh, and when they look up, you either click, if you have a clicker, do I have a clicker? I do. Click. Or if you don't have a clicker, you say a clicker word. If you don't already have one, I recommend using click today as your clicker word. It'll just help keep things clear. Once you've clicked, you follow that with a treat placed on the floor in front of your feet. Your dog will look down to eat the treat. When your dog looks toward you again, may not be eye contact, but they will be reorienting towards you. Repeat the steps two through four. Click or say your clicker word, follow with a treat placed on the floor in front of your feet, and then your dog looks down. So I'm going to switch from sharing the slides to sharing a video. There we go. And we're going to find Pam, who's going to do a live demo as you all play along. So here we start. I was doing this in a windstorm with a barking dog in the background, so we had some serious <laughs> distraction going on. All right, we will get to ping pong in a moment. Green, everybody, this is Pam Mattis with her wonderful dog, Fender. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Let's see. There's Fender. There we go. Oh. Pam is a wonderful, uh, I was going to say student, but honestly, Pam, you've been training so long. Pam is a wonderful trainer of her dogs, a sports enthusiast and um I'm willing to experiment. So what we're going to do is Pam is going to start Fender through the attention games. And Pam, maybe if you could walk a little bit toward that chair in the background so we can see a little bit more of your feet. And when Fender looks up at you, click or say your clicker word. Can I just say one thing? Yes, please do. Say whatever you'd like. Regardless of all the training, I learn something new every day, and you guys are a big part of that. So, <laughs> oh, Pam, we learn something new every day too. That that's actually a wonderful thing to share. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Yes. And then she puts the treat down. And when he looks up, she's going to say yes again. Put the treat down. Okay, Pam, I'm going to ask you to toss a treat away. He's actually doing fabulous attention while lying down. I want to see if he'll do it without lying down. So toss that treat away. When he comes back, rather than putting your hand all the way down, if you're able to drop it between your feet without it bouncing, okay. be a little bit of a physics experiment. I don't know if that'll happen. Nice. And when he looks up, yes. Beautiful. Now he's just, I just want to lie here and eat oh, treats. Okay. There he gets. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Pam. I'm going to unspotlight you for a moment while I play the ping pong game, which Fender or Blue, if he prefers, <laughs> will be demonstrating. I have a plan. <laughs> 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 Pam can train two dogs at once. Just saying. Yes. Okay. So that. we're going to show you the ping pong game and then we'll come back and um, see what questions you have about these first two games. So I'm going to unspotlight you for a moment, Pam. Yeah, we are changing dogs. Yes. Okay, Blue is like, darn, I wanted to be spotlit. Okay, so that was the look up, look down game. And by the way, you all will have access to these slides. So you'll have these, these prints of the um, steps, if you would find that helpful. So ping pong, another one of McDevitt's games, really builds on the look up, look down game. Your dog looks towards you. You click or say your click or word. Follow the click with a treat tossed initially just a few inches to your right. Your dog runs to eat the treat. When they turn back towards you, click and then 
toss the treat a few inches to your left. So in this game, you can really see that your dog can be giving you attention through orientation by that reorientation. You don't have to hold out for eye contact. Um, you're likely to get it, but that turning back to you is just a huge, huge attention. So I'm going to play the little video of ping pong and then Pam will live demo and you can play along. You can see there's some distractions in the environment, but building this pattern helps him understand that it's more valuable to reorient to me. It's you. And Pam, I'm gonna spotlight you again. Okay. There we go. Great, so if when Blue looks back at you, you click or use your clicker word. Nice. You see how he's reorienting and he is giving her attention. Um, but she doesn't have to wait for that. Just that orientation, beautiful. Pam, see what happens if you can toss it just a little further. This is the way you would up the bar, but without putting it under the furniture, <laughs> if you have room. <laughs> I know, we're, we're asking a lot of you here. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's do a couple that are just a little bit closer. Yeah. Nice. So it's great because you're showing some of the kind of logistics to keep in mind when we're working. Um, I'll often, especially when I'm um, introducing a new behavior, make sure my treat contrasts with the surface, which, um, yeah. yeah. All right. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Pam. Any, anything to add, um, Pam, or any questions? Susan, anything to add? Uh, no, but let me, I, I'm just going to throw out this question that I just happened to see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that uh, I think Valerie was asking, when do you assign a word to the behavior? Okay. So you want to address that or not? <laughs> yeah. So let's actually, let's thank Pam and give her a round of applause. Um, so we can then take you off spotlight, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That was really, it was textbook um, demo. It was great. It was. It looked awesome. It did. And then we'll go back and we'll just kind of all be here and see. Um, so uh, the question was, when do you assign a word? Yeah. Um, I'll give you my answer and then we'll see if Susan's is the same. <laughs> it, we're, it's usually close. Um, I would, uh, with these attention games, I don't actually necessarily assign a word to the up, down, and the ping pong. I do assign a word to the next game that you will see, um, which is an out and back. That said, if I wanted to assign a word or an attention sound, I would wait until my dog was actively returning to me um, and offering the attention. Uh, you, that the environment has, um, has caused the dog to do. And when my dog's reliably turning back to me in that moment, I would say the word and then I would follow that with the click or the clicker word. The click says that thing you did, that's fabulous. That's gonna lead to the treat that you're about to eat. So assigning the word comes first in the sequence. So let's say that my word was um, um, just randomly pup. When my dog turns back to me, it would actually be pup, pup. I'd be going pup, pup. And then I would follow that with my click. And then I would follow that with the treat. 
as pup pup becomes part of that sequence, I gradually back up so that I could say pup pup when I wanted that attention. Susan, any tweaks? Anything I, you would no, in differently? I, I, I I tend to um, for the for the look up, look down, and the ping pong. I I t I tend to be teaching these specific games to install habits in in my dogs. Yes. Yeah. To install something that they are like more likely to do than something else. Yeah. Um, so that so that I'm I'm creating a dog, if 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 you will, or, or I'm creating behaviors in a dog. Um, you know, giving him giving them a a sort of toolbox of behaviors. I sort of hate that that word, but I'm toolbox, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Um, and so a lot of times what happens is that uh, you know, they, they have the habit of checking in with me in various ways. Um, and if we're out somewhere and they are like thinking to themselves, I wonder what I should be doing. Something's going on. I wonder what I should be doing that the, you know, if we've practiced this a fair amount, this is going to become one of their default behaviors. You know, a lot of times people talk about having a default sit. It's like, well, when all else fails, my dog just offers me a sit. It's like, I actually kind of like to have a default attention. I like to have a dog who in absence, in absence of direction or instruction from me is checking back with me. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, <laughs> speaking of attention, that's. Speaking of attention, yes. <laughs> Somebody would like some. <laughs> So why don't we, I'm just looking cogniz cognizant of the time. Why don't we look at the next two attention games and then we can have maybe a little bit more question Q&A um, uh, before we go into the next um, realm. Super. So great. You guys have great questions. We could, we could spend all afternoon with questions. Yeah. Um, so this out and back game, you will notice that when you play it with your dog, that it really does kind of mimic, um, it does mimic a recall. Um, and so what you're going to do is um, you're going to toss, uh, and, and it's, it's nice to have both, um, you know, low and value treats when you, low and high value treats when you're working on this, but toss a low value treat away from you a few inches. Your dog runs after it, chases it, eats it. Um, when they be, you know, when they finished eating it and have kind of begun to lift their head and start to look back towards you, you can click or say your clicker word, your, your verbal marker, like a yes or something. You saw Pam doing that, I think using a yes. Um, and then feed a treat from your hand that's a little bit more high value. Um, or if you want to, you can place it at your feet as well. And you just lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> so <laughs> do you want to add something to that, Marnie? No, it sounded like you touched on everything, actually. It's yet, it's a nice variation on the ping pong. Um, yes. Yep. You change the direction a little bit. And this might look a little bit like a come when called behavior. Just saying. So, <laughs> yep. Okay. So let me go ahead and share the video. just adding a little impetus for him to to come you can see how his energy really goes up when i take those backward steps i love running away backwards from my dogs <laughs> yeah. and they love it too great so i'm going to stop sharing and i'm going to find our next demo volunteer is uh, Jean Clary and Rinky. And Jean is a longtime YDF supporter. She's on the board. She assists with a lot of classes and is just fabulous. So now all I have to do is find you, Jean.
She has her hand raised. Oh, there does she? she? Is. Okay. How is that for a view? That's a great view, Jean, especially for out and back. That's wonderful. Right. We can see all of Rinky and we can see your feet. All right. Excellent. Okay. So as with the other behaviors, um, so you can start with that. You can click while Rinky is looking at you or say your clicker word, toss a treat straight out in front of you. Beautiful. As he turns back, you click. Nice. And then feed, lovely. Toss it out. Excellent. Excellent. This is great. This is great. And again, it's another way. Just toss another one. He didn't see it. Lovely. Um, it's another way to build our dog's interest in moving into our orbit. Jean's being really um, interesting. It's like, oh my gosh, I turn to her and I get a treat and I get clicks and she tosses another one. <laughs> I'm not sure you even got it. I'd feed that no, anyway. That <laughs> yeah. And actually that's great, Jean, that that happened. If you toss a treat and your dog doesn't get it, they move out and they come back to you. I would still feed because for me, the money shot here is my dog returning to me. Um, he'll find that treat later, you know, or, or the cat will. That's nice. I love, do you all see the way that Jean is kneeling? So she's not looming into her dog's space. Sometimes if we're tall, we bend over and we kind of loom over our dogs. For many dogs, that's punishment. We spoke about earlier about what's punishing? Things our dogs don't care for. So that little demi plie is fabulous. All right. Great. Thank you, Jean. So I'm going to unspotlight you, but don't go away because we have a second game for you to do. All right. Sounds good. And so let me share the next video. We'll play that second game. And then um, after Jean uh, shows us kind of the finer points, then we'll see what other questions we have. This game is called Go Through, you might have surmised. Same Cocker Spaniel still barking. Mm -hmm. So this really builds, aside from the fun of you know, going through your legs, for some dogs, that in itself is highly reinforcing. Um, again, it really builds their drive to come to us, which is a great foundation. He is a good. All right, Jean, we're going to put you back in the spotlight. Okay. All right. Doesn't hurt to be tall. <laughs> nice. Nice, and Jean did a great job of not stepping on her dog as she did that turn that um, I mentioned it because I've had an oops moment or two. Yeah. That's a great little save. He looks at you and just toss it through. Under the sofa. <laughs> nice. Now's a great time to toss. Okay, and then toss it between your legs as he comes back to you. Nice. Okay, as he turns back to you, make sure he sees the treat and toss it between your legs. So for this exercise, so he's getting massive reinforcement. Everything you're do, doing is fabulous. Let's try getting a little bit more of the going through by just tossing the treat between. <laughs> nice, nice, great. I was afraid it was gonna take a bad bounce there, but it went well, yeah. Nice, that's great. So that gets that kind of rapid reinforcement. Nice, give that boy a bone. That was great, great. Or that girl, yeah. Girl, it's okay. Okay, yeah, I was like, hmm, uh, great. Jean, thank you so much. Round of applause for Jean. That was really lovely. We appreciate it. Uh, okay, so questions. What questions showed up? 
Nicole, oh, I see the number growing. So you're yeah. doing some serious <laughs> wrangling. <laughs> yeah, so I better just put this out there. We are going to do our best to get to as many questions as we can. But there is a chance, a high chance, that we don't get to every single yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can always feel free to reach out to your dog's friend. Um, and we're always happy to chat with you. Yeah, but let's, yeah, yeah. Here are some good ones that have been popping up during the demos. Okay, so someone has asked, so what the dog learns from these games is anytime I orient to my human, it will be rewarded? Yes. Um, and you're probably going, oh my gosh, do I always have to have Dubliner cheese in my pocket? Um, so anytime, and there they go again. So anytime your dog reorients to you, you want it to pay off for them. It isn't always going to be food. But I will say when you're building the attention initially, if your dog likes food, um, don't be hasty to remove food from the picture. Now, the, when I deliver a treat, the size of the treats in the um, video I made were about the size of a Cheerio or a little smaller. Um, they can be um, my dog's dry food if dry food is a part of my dog's meal. Um, if it's not, I would use um, probably something like uh, chicken or another single protein source that's really nutritious so that I don't have to worry that I'm overfeeding my dog. I just take some of those calories out of the meal. For honestly, both my dogs and certainly any herding dog um, that I've ever worked with, um, turning toward me, that little backup step in and of itself becomes highly rewarding really fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not just hurting dogs, the, the opportunity to chase you can become a big part of the reward. And where we're doing games where we want to bring our dogs to us, it's a really good reward to add. Susan, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, but just, I, I, I'll kind of go back to the, you know, don't underestimate your, um, your charm. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I mean, there, there are plenty I'm thinking of this morning, you know, there are plenty of times when I might be rewarding my puppy with food for checking in with me. Um, but I'll also occasionally just kind of look at him and go, Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, <laughs> you know, and be, be sincere about it. So yeah. 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 How often do you play these games and how long should they last? So I, wow, I play them. I know if my dog looks at me, the game might start. Um, yeah. I, I'll play them for a couple of minutes. Um, as long as we've got that great energy, I'll do it off and on throughout the day. Does that mean 20 times? No, maybe three to five. If I'm outside with my dog, um, we're doing things together. We're hanging out these games come up, we might do a 30 second burst several times that we're outside. Um, and I will say my dogs can initiate the game by giving me attention as well. Um, that's kind of another piece of it. That is awesome. Um, a few people have brought up, my dog is just looking at my hand. They're just looking at my treats. What should I do about that? Should I wait for eye contact? Uh, a lot of things along those lines. Okay, let me toss that one to you, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so as far as dogs looking at our hands, um, I that's a that's a great catch because um, even if even if we don't care if they look at our face, even if all we're kind of uh, we're rewarding for or clicking for or marking for is their reorientation to us, um, we don't we don't want to have that food out hanging out there and, th and that's probably why they're looking at your hands is because there's probably food in your hands or in the past there has been food in your hands <laughs> when when you're training so anytime we're training ideally and i know i mean this is something you know when you look at one of my videos i'm sort of like ah you know i shouldn't have had my hand quite there yeah <laughs> um, but whenever we're training we really do like to have the just sort of the picture um, as clean as possible. And so if there's food hanging around and I'm trying to train my dog something, they're going to be paying attention to that food probably way more than they're paying attention 
to um, what my body is doing, um, what they're getting reinforced for. If I have a verbal cue, what I'm saying to them, that, that food is going to be what we call overshadowing everything <laughs> that's, that's happening. So I might do things like um, have the food behind me, you know, uh, in, in one hand, or I might have, um, if I'm training in my house, um, don't underestimate the value of, I'll just tell you, little bowls <laughs> <laughs> with little tiny pieces of dried treats or kibble in it, um, you know, set nearby so that you literally have nothing on your body and your dog does what you want. You say, yes, you grab a treat and you toss, um, you know, this is why, you know, treat pouches are good to have. Um, I will tell you, I do use treat pouches, but I do a lot of shoving treats in my pocket. <laughs> and so then I don't, I don't have to have it in my hands. And, um, and my dogs aren't always seeing a treat pouch whenever we train. So it's, um, you know, so, so they, so they aren't always thinking to themselves, oh, well, the only time I work with her is if I see a treat pouch on her, on her body. Yeah. So I mix it up a little bit. Um, and I will throw something out there really quickly. Um, you can, if, if, if you do, if you are wearing a treat pouch and your dog is looking at the treat pouch, this is a little thing that I will suggest to people. And sometimes people do it, but when they do it, they come back and say, wow, that really worked. So if your dog is just staring at the treat pouch constantly, whenever you're working with them, um, for the next week, walk around with your treat pouch on with food and without, and pretty soon your dog will not, will just, it'll just be kind of part of the picture. It won't indicate, oh, we're training right now, or we're not training right now if the treat pouch is off of her. So, um, and pretty much everybody I've suggested that to who's done it comes back and says, wow, that it's, that sounds like the silliest thing in the world, but it actually works. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Um, can we do this while we as the human are sitting down or in different positions? Um, yes. Uh, you may find that uh, standing up gets you on your dog's radar sooner to initiate the game, but practicing it in different positions, I like the way you're thinking. Um, we want our dogs to, to give us, to choose to give us attention you know, not just when we're standing up looking like we might throw a treat. So great question. Yeah. Um, okay. I have a fun one for you. What <laughs> to do about attention accompanied by barking? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'll go first and I'm sure Susan will have something to add. I, um, so in a perfect world, I catch the attention and mark it with a click and feed it before my dog starts barking. That's in a perfect world. If I have not been perfect, I, that often happens at my house, um, and my dog begins barking, I will wait until my dog is quiet. Um, if, I'm, if I wanna work attention, I'll wait till my dog's quiet and I will reciprocate that attention because the barking is likely my dog asking for my attention. Um, and then I will reciprocate it again, I, either through praise or with food. I don't want to build a chain of, I bark, I get quiet, I get food, which is why that's one of the situations in which I'm a little slow to deliver the food. Um, but I will, um, so just to back up, when the, my dog has become quiet, I reinforce it with praise and my attention. And then I reinforce the continued quiet with praise and my attention again before the barking resumes. Another thing you can do if your dog is just bark, 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 bark. Um, and this requires a, requires a lot of fortitude on the part of the human. And it can lead to a certain amount of frustration on the part of your dog. So, you know, have a care. Um, if my dog is just barking, silent, barking, silent, barking, silent, and we have that, that rhythm going on, I will begin to hold a count in my head. And uh, so my dog has barked and then he's silent for a count of one. I'll initially give attention then. Um, let's say he starts barking again. Um, I will 
give attention on a count of one and a half or a count of two. I will gradually help my dog understand that he needs to be silent for a certain period of time in order for me to give him attention. Um, final footnote before I toss the hot potato to Susan. Um, barking is communication. Yes, there is a style of barking. I think most of us recognize that's the dog going, hey, hey, hey. Um, but other barking can mean other things. So if barking's persistent, I'm going to ask the question, is there something else going on? Is there another need that needs to be met? Um, my dogs, if I didn't notice them staring longingly out the door, needing to relieve themselves, one of my dogs will come and sit in front of me and bark. I reinforce that every time because I would much rather he say, you know, you really didn't notice me sitting by the door than that he eliminate inside. Um, okay. Hot potato is yours, Susan. <laughs> Well, I, that's, I mean, I would do all those things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, I, you know, the other thing too, is, is that a lot of times when we're training, um, and, and I don't know if this is what you're seeing, um, the, the person who asked this question, mm -hmm. you know, so, sometimes we'll, we'll see barking because the dog, the dog is frustrated because of something that we're doing. So um, if I'm working with a dog and I'm getting, I'm getting some barking, I will look and see, you know, am I, am I delivering that treat quickly enough or am I screwing around looking in my pouch or something, you know? So I, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that, that my mechanics are, are pretty darn smooth. Um, sometimes I know that when we're training um, and we stop, that can be, that can be kind of punishing for our dogs. Yeah. And there are lots of dogs that when we stop training, if we just stop, they'll be like, hey, 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 lady. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought we were having a wonderful time here um, and you went and ruined it. Um, and so with my dogs, and I do suggest with dogs that I work with that you do um, set up a kind of um, pattern or um, I'm trying to think of another word for it. But so when I'm, when I'm done training, um, I might look at my dog and say, all done and take a fistful yeah. of kibble and toss some food away so that they have a little bit of a transition. They kind of go from, oh, this is fun. This is great. This is fun. This is great to, oh, this is interesting. I can sniff. Um, sometimes the sniffing is calming. I, you know, instead of it just being, this is fun. This is great. We're training. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're walking out of the, you're leaving. This is it. This is, yeah. we're done. So anyway, um, that's, um, sometimes barking will show up that way. Um, or I'll, you know, I'll have something that they can work on like a licky mat or a frozen Kong or something. So. Yeah. I love that you said that. And that actually, uh, one of the other questions was what is the best way to transition from playing to rest? Yeah. 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 So I think you kind of touched on that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want any more questions now or do you want to roll through some other stuff and then come back to questions later? What's best? I think let's roll forward. Yeah, I and think so. Yeah. That sounds good. Go. Speaking of hot potatoes, I pass the baton yes. to Susan. Okay. So we are going to work on... Do you want to put the slide back up, Marnie? Oh, yeah. Slides would be good. That's a, cool. great. Um, and then uh, there we go. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to um, go over a few uh, games with you all that kind of have us moving a little bit. Um, because, of course, we, we talked about, um, you know, we want our dog's attention when we're doing things like loose leash walking or, you know, hiking with them even. Um, so having, having moving attention is definitely important. And this first one is called the box step. And I, lots of thanks to Casey um, LaMonico. She, um, she has a nice video on YouTube um, covering this. I've, I've attempted to do my own, you know, rough uh, version of this. Um, hers actually goes a little bit further into some some other um, uh, behaviors as well. So I encourage you to check it out. You guys will get the 
the slides and it'll have the links on this. Um, but what this is, is we are teaching our dogs that it is valuable to hang out in this kind of reinforcement zone around us. Um, there are a lot of trainers you can, you'll, that, you'll, that you might run into that, that will call it this, you know, that, wow, this area around my human is really, is pretty reinforcing. Um, and this is just an, uh, one of many games that you can play to um, teach that. So what you're going to do, and, and I, I'll have a video, I, I have a video for this as well. You're going to stand. Um, uh, sometimes I will just kind of move my body so that my dog is at my side. You know, I'm not worrying about trying to get him there. I could lure him there if I wanted to, but I'll just kind of position myself. So my dog is, let's say, starting off on my left. Um, I, if I'm holding a leash, I will, and you know, you, you'll see me in the video. I actually am not using a leash with this because I kind of like for people to start this with, without a leash, but I will hold the leash in my right hand if my dog is on the left. Um, so I can feed with my left hand. So I can just do an up and down motion and you'll see that up and down motion in the um, video. And um, so I'm basically just going to, um, reward my dog for hanging out there uh, for a few seconds, just to kind of make it really, really reinforcing before we start moving. And so I'm just gonna click or say yes and drop a little piece of food either in my dog's mouth or on the ground, totally up to you. Um, I'll do that five times. And then I will take, I will move myself as if I'm on um, a little, um, you know, I'm, I'm just moving in a, in a square or a box, <laughs> hence the name box step. Um, I will take a little 90 degree turn to the right um, and click and feed my dog as they move with me. And you are, you are moving a very small amount and most dogs will, you know, will follow you because it's just barely a step. And then I will move another 90 degrees to the right, click and feed, another 90 degrees to the right, click and feed, and another 90 degrees to the right, click and feed. And then I'm back at my kind of home position. Um, and you can do this until the cows come home. You'll <laughs> see in the video, I actually switch sides and I, I'm kind of like, gee, I wonder if my dog will do it on the right hand side. Um, and so I played around with that as well. Um, so let's see, let me find my video and I will show that. So I think Marnie, do you like, do you take the, you take the, oh, I need to remove the stop sharing. I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. And I'm just going to show this. And this is, this is my seven month old puppy. So. For those of y'all who are wondering about doing these things with young dogs, so. And I, I, again, I didn't mention this, but I'm putting it out here. This also teaches us humans that where we reinforce matters. <laughs> yes, it does. On something called box step. And all this is, is we're just reinforcing our dogs for hanging out at our side, either our left or our right, doesn't matter, you choose, um, and just staying connected with us while we take a little bit of a move. We're just going to be moving either to the right or the left, depending on where your puppy is. If your puppy's on the left-hand side, you're going to be wanting to move to the right. If you want your puppy on the right-hand side, you're going to be wanting to move to the left. So we're keeping them on the outside of this little box or circle that, that we're making. But the first thing I'm going to do is just reward him for being at my side five times. I'm just clicking and feeding right there at my pant seam. Beautiful. And I'm going to take a 90 degree turn and feed him right there. Then I'm going to take another 90 degree turn and feed him there, and another one. And I'm feeding him in the same place each time. There we go. <laughs> that was awesome, buddy. Should we try it again? Let's see if we can do it on the right-hand side. Let me adjust my 
food here so I can use my right hand to feed him. But I'll show you, I'm going to feed him five times on the right again, just so that he really gets the idea of um, boy, being at this side of her body is a great thing. Again, same place roughly every time. And then I'm going to take my little turn, 90 degrees, feed him at the side, 90 degrees, feed him at the side, 90 degrees, feed him at the side, and I'm clicking for him being roughly in that area, and then reaching for my treat. The boy, that was awesome. <laughs> Okay, super. Um, so just a couple of things to point out before we um, go to our wonderful demo team. Um, and I kind of mentioned this in the captions. I, when I think about it, <laughs> when I'm being a good trainer, um, my hand is literally just dropping down to feed my dog at my pants seam and coming right back up to my body you know, either my, my stomach, my hip, my chest, wherever, but I'm not, I'm not keeping it hanging down there most of the time. I think I was somewhat, I think I was maybe 80% successful there with that. <laughs> um, but that it's just a pattern that you'll kind of get a habit of. And that keeps, um, we had talked about keeping the, um, keeping the training environment kind of clean, you know, that, that keeps it so that the food isn't just hanging down in front of my dog. Um, so, okay, so let me find the wonderful Patrick and let's see. Oh, there he is. Yay! Woohoo! Okay, thank you so much. Hey, Patrick. Oh, it's a little echoey. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so, Patrick um, is joining us from. Um, the Mountain West, <laughs> I'll just say. El Paso. And he is yes, yeah, El Paso. And he is a wonderful trainer. And that is um, blue, right? Yep, so, this is blue. Yes. Cheddar's going to come now interrupt. And Cheddar's going to come and join, of course. Yep. And um, he is he is your he is your guy if you ever want to build like fabulous outdoor environments for your dogs to like you know, <laughs> run, to climb and run around on. So. Okay, so any questions, Patrick, before you try this out? I don't think so. We've been practicing this morning. Oh, so okay. We'll give cool. it a shot. Yeah, show us, show us what you got. Right, yes. Yes. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yes. 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 Great. Beautiful. Yes. Super. Yes. I loved Patrick. I love that you started it off with, you know, a lot of food in that one place, you know, because sometimes I, I forget to do that. Um, and that um, really reminds our dogs that it's like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really working with you. This is, this is great. Beautiful. <laughs> it's like, oh, but look at that. You made a little turn. And Blue kind of saw that out of the corner of, of his eye and, um, and was like, ooh, maybe we are continuing to play that. So lovely. Um, yeah, so what I think of this, and I think you're, you're showing this beautifully, is that we're teaching our dogs that following our body motion, that paying attention to our body motion is, is a good thing, is something that's going to pay off. And something that 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 they you know that they're going to enjoy participating in. Um, do you have any questions, or do you have anything that kind of that you while you've been practicing this noticed about this, Patrick? Or um, you know, I would say uh, like as we did it, um, she kind of gets the being in the right position on my side. Like initially, she'll start like this, but then as we go around, she gets kind of you know where you want her to be when she's walking. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, it's it's. Um, so it's interesting. So, um, you know, a lot of times when you do this, um, especially with kind of a dog that has, you haven't done much work with, you know, sometimes the dog will be kind of like, where am I supposed to be? Where am I supposed to be? And if you just are kind of quiet about it, like I saw you do keeping your body quiet, 
just continuing to, you know, just make that little move and reinforcing um, that the dogs pick that up really, really quickly. So awesome. Great. Marnie, do you need, do you want to add anything? So I saw two questions come in. Okay. That I think it'd be really good to like depart from our carefully crafted um, schedule and address now. (laughs) Yes. Yes. One of them is, was my dog sits in front of me, except when we're walking. How would I do this? And the other one is, and they may be cousin questions. So what are we reinforcing? What's the clicker point here? Mm -hmm. So the, um, so the, so when you're, you know what, when you're first starting off, um, I, I will tell you because you are just moving. I, you are just clicking and putting that food down because the dog, the dog is right there. You notice that when I started it with Augie, he really didn't move that first time, but he was close enough. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't five feet from me. He wasn't wandering around. So I'm reinforcing. So when I first start off, I'm just clicking and feeding. And it usually takes most dogs just one, one little 90 degree turn to realize, oh, oh, if, if I, if I keep up with her, then I will, I will, you know, and I stay in this little reinforcement zone on her left, um, let's say that I am, I am going to get reinforced. We are creating like some of the other stuff that we've looked at. We're, we're creating a pattern um, so that the dog understands it's like, oh, human moves. Um, I, I hear, I, you know, I, I follow the human a little bit and they're just taking a, a step or, you know, just barely a step. Um, I hear a click or a, or a marker word or a clicker word. And then the food appears in the same place each time. So we are, we are marking the dog, just following our body a little bit. It's not a big, it's not a huge, um, it's not a huge step. And this is why we say, I mean, we can, you know, we can add bigger steps later, but this is where you start just to get your dog understanding that, ooh, paying attention to you while you move is an awesome thing. Um, I don't know if I answered all of that, Marnie, but um, do you want to chime in on that or? Um, No, I I think you did. Okay. You did. We had another question here. Here, let me toss questions at you. Come in while you were answering it. Hold on. Um, The um, person who said something about the dog. Oh, gotcha. sitting in front. Yeah. Yeah. So I would simply make sure that um, I was reinforcing fast enough because what's happening and, and it, you know, and, and it might not work immediately, but here's the thing. Your dog has gotten 553,400 million pieces of reinforcement for being in front of you and facing you they probably have gotten almost nothing or very little for being at your side. And so we're teaching them now, ah, guess what? There's another place where reinforcement can happen. And so we just have to be consistent and, and a little bit fast at first and kind of catch them. Um, And I might even, I might even the first few times kind of move my body to help them out you know, so that, so that you're moving your body so that they're at, so that they're at your side. Um, so yeah, let me, oh, but let me go back. I just want to thank Patrick. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Patrick and blue. That was super awesome. It was lovely seeing you guys. Yeah. So yeah. Yay. blue is blue is growing up. So pretty blue's a young dog too. Just so just I know. So you all, everybody out there knows. So yeah. Oh, Patrick did a cool thing. I wanted to mention. Okay. Too. I mean, every, everybody okay. did a cool thing. There was one mechanical thing when blue began to scooch ahead. Patrick still delivered the treat in the yes. very particular place right against the seam of his pants. Yeah. Um, and, and blue gradually was like, Oh, Oh, it doesn't make sense for me to move ahead. Mm-hmm. Yes. That um, I mean, what if, if we're consistent with where that food shows up, our dogs begin to have no other reason to be anywhere else because behavior and I'm sure all the trainers out there will go, well, most of the time, but, um, but behavior <laughs> happens where the reinforcement happens. 
Yeah. So, which is why the dogs that are, you know, in the front are kind of struggling, maybe struggling a little bit because they're just like, well, wait a minute. I, I always get reinforced in the front. Why you're, you're, you're changing things on me. That's okay. Give them, give them time. So cool. Okay. Anything else? Can I bring up a, a quick question yeah. uh, that a few people have asked? I know some of our awesome demo teams have a lot of experience working with two dogs at once, but some people have asked, what do I do if I have two dogs? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, That seems to be a theme this week, doesn't it? It Martin? is a theme this week. Yes. Uh, so um, that's a whole nother webinar. I will just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, we've actually, we've gotten enough, um, you know, we, we seem to have enough students that have multiple dogs, um, you know, even three or more. Um, but, um, and then I'll, I'll throw this on to you, Marnie, after I've just said a couple of things. Um, I, you know, I, I, I will just really briefly tell you how I did this with my two dogs. Um, and that is liberal use of X-Pens. So one dog is on one side of an X pen or a barrier or a gate or in a crate. Um, and I have a dog that I'm working with, but I work with that dog. And, and actually I might even start it off by not even working with the dog. I might just starting off with, can we be on either side of a barrier and I'm with one dog and the other dog is, is, is comfortable. So I would be reinforcing the dog that's with me but also reinforcing the dog that's, that's on the other side of the barrier. And then I'm, you know, and then I would do that for maybe 30 seconds and then I'd switch <laughs> and I'd re, you know, and so both dogs get experience being with me getting reinforced, but also being not being with me and getting reinforced. Um, but that, that's how I would start it. Continuing it, you know, there's, there, there are a lot of steps. So do you have anything to say about that Marnie or? Oh, um, just, just that I agree. It's really, um, if your dogs are different ages, generally one of them may have a more stable downstay, um, stay in place behavior, something of that nature that you can build on. Uh, but I love being able to reinforce a dog for holding a stay while the other dog's doing something active. Um, yes. it, it just makes makes both dogs behaviors so much more powerful and, um, um, you know, and it's more interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Cause, cause, cause you can also do it by teaching, um, you know, um, um, positions, you know, you can teach it by having, by teaching your dog, you hang out on this bed while I work with yeah. this dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just tend to go for the, uh, barriers because it just, you can, you can get some nice stuff pretty, pretty quickly that way. But ultimately I would be teaching you hang out on a mat while I work with this dog and then we switch places. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yes, there are, um, there are, you know, we haven't done a webinar on this, but there are, I, I know Fenzy sports has done a webinar on this. I haven't found it yet, but I know they have. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Great. Great question. Anything else before I go to the we had one question. I think yeah. I, um, I saw, I mean, it was a zillion questions come in. Um, yeah. One of them, uh, quick question. Do you fade the food first or the click first? I don't fade any of it. <laughs> so if you, you know, when you move away from marking each behavior, or if you do move away from marking a behavior, Oh, oh, I would, I mean, it, so here, I mean, maybe I, I don't know if I'm understanding the question or not, but let me, let me, let me try. Um, yes, I would, I would always reinforce this. Gotcha. <laughs> so yeah. You I wouldn't mean, fade. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, um, especially if I were playing this, you know, Again, these are these are foundation behaviors, you know. And I, um, I, I mean, I'll just tell you. I mean, I have a thirteen-year-old dog, and um, 
I, I feel like whatever I'm working with him, I'm always reinforcing him in, in, in some way. So this, so, so this, this last game, the unbox um, step, I might at some point make, take two steps and then reinforce that, you know, and then maybe three steps and reinforce that. But I, but I hesitate to to bring that up right now because we humans tend to push that way too fast. Yeah. We tend to play a game like this with our dogs once or twice. And then we're like, Oh, you don't, you don't need any reinforcement anymore. Cause, cause you totally understand it. Um, I, you know, I mean, it's, you know, that's the old thing that you hear lots of trainers say, it's like, you know, all of us like being paid. Right. So in, in, in some ways, <laughs> so um, I, you know, I, you know, I would, I would, I might, I might, you know, extend the behavior to, you know, more than one turn, but I would still be reinforcing it at some point, you know, <laughs> just because as Bob Bailey says, we really need to make it worth our dog's while to play our silly little human games. So I am always thinking of ways that I can reinforce my dogs for playing the silly human games. So um, I don't know if that, do you, do you think that answered it, Marnie, or did that? I think um, there was a mechanical question too. I, I completely okay. agree. My dogs are year and a half, so teenager and eight yeah. years old. I still, um, for some behaviors, I will do click treat to spiff something up, to make something clear to, um, because they get really excited when we do clicker training, you know, so just to bring that affect. That said, um, if I'm getting to the point where I'm not marking every behavior, I will not click without feeding. The yes. click is always, always, or the yes is always, always followed by a treat. Absolutely, yeah, okay. I see. I, I I see where we're going with this. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will. I will never click and not treat. Yeah. <laughs> but I will plenty of times treat and I haven't clicked. Yeah. So I mean, if that if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So great. Okay. Anybody? Should we move on? I want to know where my dog is. So yeah. <laughs> oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the next one is where's my dog? Um, yeah, there's box. I think the next there. Oh, oh no. Or was it one, two, three? It was one, two, three. Oh, it I is, looking it ahead. One, two, three. Sorry. I got, I got confused. I my was mistake. Like ahead. I was no, I confused ahead. you. Yeah. So one, so, but yeah, but we'll do where's my dog, which is sort of like dessert for me. Um, so <laughs> It's like, um, so the one, two, three game, this is another, um, Leslie McDevitt pattern game. Um, and, uh, again, we're teaching our dogs to, you know, to pay attention to our body, to follow our body's movement and to understand that ultimately, um, you know, we're going to take three steps. We're going to count out loud and they're gonna get reinforced for hanging next to us. Um, so let me just really briefly kind of kind of go over the steps with this. I like to start this off um, by taking one step first and then getting that down well, and then taking two steps and then getting that down well. And you'll see in the video how I do this. This is, I think, a little differently than how Leslie does it, mm -hmm. um, but Leslie's very generous um, in telling people you do what works with your dog, you know? So if you feel like your dog can start at two steps or three steps, you are welcome to do that. Um, so basically all we're doing is um, I will start again at, um, and I actually don't know if I do this in the video, so that's my bad, but I will generally um, start to kind of tell my dog the game is on um, by feeding him five really fast pieces of food at my side. Um, um, just to tell him that, you know, things are about to happen. This is not a game that I click. Um, and I'll kind of explain why later on, and maybe you'll see why later on, because I think um, the, uh, the, the counting that we do with this game, I think that is a, you know, and I'm sure somewhere somebody is shuddering, but um, 
<laughs> I think this is kind of a combination of cueing my dog to do something and then marking it, you know, telling him, yep, you did it. And here's, here's some food. Um, I mean, that isn't, I don't think that's exactly how Leslie looks at it, but I, that's, that's kind of why I don't use a, a clicker because I think there's plenty of communication going on. Yeah. Um, so that I think the clicker just might be kind of a little extraneous with, with this. Um, but I don't believe Les, Leslie uses a clicker with, with this either. Essentially, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take one step. I'm going to count that step out loud one, and I'm going to put a piece of food down by the side of my body, by this, by the side of my foot where I want my dog. I will be using like before I will be using, if my dog's on the left-hand side, I'll be using my left hand to put that piece of food down. Um, so I don't have to cross over my body. Um, and when my dog is, you know, and then the next step, I'll take one, I'll count out loud, put another piece of food down. And I will keep counting single steps until I feel like my dog is staying connected with me. Till I figure, till they have kind of got the pat, this little quickie pattern down. And then I'll try it with two. I'll say, can we take two steps together? One, two, place food down. One, two, place food down. And then as soon as my dog is comfortable with two steps, I'll try three. And three is kind of, um, three is kind of where we end. And so that, it, you know, I will count out one, two, three, put the food down. One, two, three, put the food down. Um, I, and, uh, you know, once you've kind of gotten to three, you will generally stay at three unless your dog is in a really distracting environment. And you're kind of saying to yourself, you know what? I need to up the rate of reinforcement and we're going to just count to one and take a step, count to one and take a step. Um, so this is, so this game is, is, has lots of has lots of ways that you can adapt it to your dog, how your dog is feeling, the environment that your dog is in. Um, so let me show the video, uh, and you'll kind of hear my voice counting out loud. <laughs> but I but not I just I cannot seem to get the sound right on my videos. Um, but this is. Um, so I will kind of count for myself so you guys can see what, um, what's happening here. So, okay. And this is just to show you how I hold a leash, which is not really what this, class, this session is about, but what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna take one step. There you go. One, put food down. One, put food down. And I took two. So one, put food down. I'm being super consistent about where I put that food. I'm putting the food where I want the dog to be. Again, behavior is going to happen where that reinforcement happens. But my dog is learning to, to follow my body. I'm taking two steps now. One, two, food down. One, two, food down. One, two, food down. And then I'll take three steps. Yeah. One, two, three, put food down. One, two, three, food down. One, two, three, food down. It should kind of be hypnotic for your dogs eventually. <laughs> <laughs> there we go okay super okay so there's lynn <laughs> awesome guys um you can um great you've got your video on so do you have any questions about this, Lynn, before you and Kona start? Oh, well, let me just introduce Lynn. <laughs> this going. is Lynn Champito. She and Kona are um, uh, nose work team extraordinaire. And um, Kona is on a short list of dogs that um, if Lynn ever turns her back, I'm swooping in and taking. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, do you have any questions before you get started with this? Um, you know, you can do this off leash if, if you like, because I, I actually like people to start this in their home off leash because then the human gets the pattern down, the dog gets the pattern down, and we're not worried about the leash. Um, great, okay. There you go. There you go. Go. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. One. There you go, super. And Lynn, I'm telling you, you can actually pick up your pace a little bit, you know, um, because what we want Kona to do is kind of be thinking like, ooh, I have to follow her. I have to really kind of be there and follow her. So just take a step, one, and then take another step, and one, beautiful, yep. Perfect. Yeah, Kona's like, I'm not doing anything except following you. Yeah. Yeah, and try try two. Ooh, they're gonna try it on the other side. Ooh. <laughs> Fancy. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Yep. One, two. Yep. One, two. Lovely. <laughs> Super. And then try three if you if you feel like it. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Beautiful. Good nice. Work. And I want everyone to notice how, um, and this is sort of a theme today, you know, how Lynn, she put the food down, but that hand that had the food in it yeah. came right up and was resting against her torso or her hip or whatever. Um, it wasn't hanging down there luring her dog, getting her dog kind of distracted, you know, because um, otherwise Kona would have been, uh, would have thought, oh, this is all about the food is hanging in Lynn's hand and I just follow the food. Yeah. And it's like, no, we're, you know, she's actually following Lynn. She gets to Lynn, boom, food shows up in the same place each time. So anything you want to, um, do you have any questions about this, Lynn? No. Okay, good. Marnie, do you have anything to add to this? No, it looked fabulous. Okay, okay. Um, let me just say really quickly why we why we do why we count out loud. Um, uh, because sometimes it feels silly for us humans to do that. Number one, it keeps, despite the fact that you saw me screw up a couple of times in my video, <laughs> um, it generally keeps us honest about how many steps we're taking. Um, because a lot of times our brains and our bodies don't work quite the same way. But if we're counting out, we're counting out for the dog, we're also counting out for ourselves too. It also is a lovely little piece of communication that tells the dog, we're playing this game, we're playing this game, we're playing this game. And I can tell you pretty much all the dogs I've taught this to, the humans report, oh my gosh, as soon as I start counting out, my dog is just like, whoa. <laughs> I am right there next to you. I am not going anywhere else. So great. Okay. Should we go on to uh, where's my dog, Marnie? Or do you think we should? Yeah, I think let's do and then see what questions okay, we have since good. they're kind of cousin behaviors. Yes, so. they are. Okay. So I'm going to, yeah, perfect. So the next one is where's my dog? And this is this is our last behavior, um, but this is, I think, um, and I think Marty might agree, just one, I mean, it's certainly one of our top few favorite things to teach our dog because it's so fun and so goofy and just so, I, it's, it's the reason why we had dogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, um, and um, the, wonderful, the wonderful Lynn and Kona will be showing us this again. But uh, this is basically um, teaching our dogs, again, that following our body motions and looking at where we're looking, looking at where our body is pointed um, is, is a valuable cue. So it, again, it teaches them 
you know, they, they kind of naturally pay attention to what our body does, but we're, um, we're kind of supercharging it a little bit by um, reinforcing that, that tendency anyway. So uh, your dog is a little bit behind you. You might take a few steps uh, ahead um, and look to your right a little bit and maybe look to where you want your dog. And most dogs without any kind of cue at all, because verbal cue, because the cue is your body, will move to that side of your body. When they arrive, you feed them. Um, and you can make some happy little noises as you are looking where you want your dog to be. Um, you can also add the phrase, where's my dog? <laughs> um, when you are looking where your dog is. So my dog will be behind me a little bit. I'll take a, a step forward and I'll look down on the, you know, down where I want my dog to be and say something like, where's my dog? And my, and because my body is opening up and pointing in a space, my dog is going to fill that space up. Um, and I'm going to reinforce them as soon as they've um, shown up there. Um, so let me just show the video. Let me see if I've got this one. Uh, hold on. Let me grab. There it is. Okay. Yes, and this is one mind dog that taught me this so many years ago. I toss a treat away and I just look where I want my dog to come. And I'm kind of playing around with actually not moving too and looking, but I toss a treat away. There you go. And he's just watching what my body does. Yeah. And you'll see, even if he's standing behind me, he's just kind of moving. <laughs> and I do, I'll answer my own question. There you are, you know, which is kind of part of the reinforcement. You know, it's kind of an acknowledgement of like, oh my God, there you are. He gets a treat of course, but, um, but he gets connection with, with me. So, you ready, Lynn? <laughs> Do you have any questions? Um, okay. okay, good. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah, there you go, nice. Nice, look at that, beautiful. That is awesome. <laughs> There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Just like nice. Beautiful. Yep. Yeah, and and Lynn's choosing to feed by hand. You could just as easily drop it by the side of your foot if you wanted to. That's it's kind of up to you and your dog. So, yeah, nice. And so Lynn stand there for a second and have Kona behind you and see if you can kind of look over one shoulder and just have her move. Um, there you go. Yeah, and just kind of stand and look over one side. Yeah, there you go. And then see if you can, yeah, and then just, yeah, nice. There you go, good, super. Yeah, so Kona's just basically looking at, you know, where, you know, where is my, where's my person's, Where's my person's attention? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yes, <laughs> good. Yeah, so you could, yeah, you could just start it over again or yeah, get her behind you a little bit, especially in the beginning. So just, yeah, just kind of, if you want her on the right-hand side, you can just play a little bit with opening up your body a little bit more. There you go, yeah, yeah, perfect, okay. Anything you want to add, Marnie? Um, no, there's a question I want to make sure we answer. It's not specific to this, but okay. I can toss it out there now. 
Okay. If you like, I just yeah, let me let me just let me just thank let me give a big round oh, of applause for, yes. for Lynn and Kona. Applause. Thank you all so thank much. You. They are they are also stars of our cognition class. I'll just say that. So they are. <laughs> we have a few cognition stars here. Yes, we yes. do. So okay. So the, the question, Susan, uh -huh. which applies uh, not just to, um, to that exercise is when do you feed out of your hand by your side versus when do you um, uh, drop the food by your foot? Yeah. Feed um, on the ground. I, yeah. you know, I, a lot of it depends on the dog, you know, I mean, Honestly, if I have a dog that's taking my hand off, um, I mean, I mean, I know I have, <laughs> I know I have some work to do with that, you know. Um, so in the meantime, I might just drop it next to my foot. <laughs> um, but I also try and, you know, there's always the issue about if you drop food, sometimes it bounces around or something. So um, I'm, I'm always kind of aware of that. Um, uh, you know, I, I think if. If, if you want to be like super accurate, you would probably use your hand, you know, and feed directly to the mouth because there is that chance that if you drop it by the side of your foot, it is going to kind of bounce off away or something. Yeah. So um, I think I answered that question. So, yeah. I think so. Okay. Anything else? I don't know where I... Are there other questions? Uh, should I bring up some questions from earlier, kind of more general ones? Sure. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a bunch of questions about one of our favorite things, working around distractions. So, you know, <laughs> my dog will play these games inside or in our yard, but anytime there are people around or other dogs or other distractions, um, sniff things to sniff, you know, we have no attention whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Great question. Do you want to go first, Susan, or shall I? Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's a number of ways to look at this. Um, so when I have a behavior that I'm thinking about proofing, let's say, so in other words, I'm thinking about um, whenever I teach a behavior, I'm always thinking, looking at the dog saying, can you do this? Can you do this behavior even though fill in the blank? Okay, some this is happening or that's happening. Um, so yes, I will definitely start in the house. Um, I will. I and so my idea is, of course, to gradually increase the amount of distractions. You know, sometimes what you know, and I make this mistake too. I might I might move from playing in my kitchen to then trying it out on a walk. And honestly, and, and you know what? And it might work, okay? It might work. But if my dog tells me I can't do this on a walk, I ask myself, what are the 10 places between my kitchen and, and being out on a walk that I could be practicing this with? So if the last place I practiced it was the kitchen, I might try a few other rooms in my house. I might try a few other rooms in my house when people are walking around. I might try my back deck. I might try my backyard. Um, I might, so you see, it's like, I'm not, a lot of times we do tend to go from, you know, sort of kindergarten level to master's level. Um, but generally if we, if we see our dog not performing, we, I mean, that's information. It's important information. And so we just basically have to say, okay, let me figure out the five or six other places that are easier than this or pick one that's half as hard. So Marnie, do you have any, I mean, I mean, there's, you know. Sure. Just a little, we could, this could be another webinar. It really could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, so fabulous question. It's a big issue for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to take a riff on what Susan was saying about, you know, if our dog can't do it, it tells us something. We tend to think of our dog not getting it right as failure, but it's not. It's information about where to set our training bar. 
when our dog can get it right, but is reaching a little bit, that's a great place to be. If our dog is consistently not able to do something, that tells us we need to go back to where our dog can do something and build on that. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, we'll just get frustration and we won't get really solid behaviors and everybody gets cranky. Um, Yes, yes, yeah. (laughs) yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, a lot of times people will say, oh, my dogs won't do it around dogs, other dogs. But there's a huge question there. How close are those dogs? Are they two feet away? Well, heck yeah. Yeah. Could they do it when the dogs are 30 feet away? Maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. And so now your dog is doing it around other dogs. And now you have a barometer. Now you can move those dogs a little bit closer. So, and, and it's, it's fill in the blank. It's not just dogs. It's fill in the blank. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, we have a question about my dog actually uh, demands attention, pawing and jumping. I'd like her to understand that I cannot pay attention to her all <laughs> of the time. And how do I turn off the So the, the all done that Susan spoke about can help. Um, I, I think Susan and I both do this. Um, and you know, it's like, it's like parallel evolution. Cause I don't think we ever talked about it, but yeah. um, I, I will do is, you know, all done these hands. I can even see my dog swearing under their breath. Now, if I do that, cause they know that, you know, the gravy train has ended, but I still give them something else to do. So I'm really clear, all done, not available to you now. Here's this other activity. So I would be choosing times that you want your dog to be on his or her own, doing all done and give, provide an alternative activity. In parallel, I'd be learning about teaching a relaxation behavior, which is, I guess, another webinar. Yes, it um, is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are Sarah Owings has a gr- has some great videos O W I N G S on teaching relaxation on a mat. Um, Suzanne Clothier has um, great resources on teaching really real relaxation, and she even has um, a Vimeo video on that. So those those are two resources I'd be looking at for building that alternative behavior. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I was a little bit frozen, but I think I'm back now. Okay. (laughs) We just Uh, went on without you, Nicole. (laughs) Sorry about that. (laughs) No, no. Uh, uh, Tammy Iona asks, what are their names again, please? So Sarah Owings, O-W-I-N-G-S, has uh, several YouTube videos on teaching relaxation on a mat. They're they're slightly different, but they're complementary. Suzanne Clothier, C-L-O-T-H-I-E-R, um, um, has, um, I think her handout on really real relaxation uh, is her name for the behavior, may be available on her website, uh, but she also has um, a, a video that's available for um, rent or, or purchase on Vimeo on really real relaxation that is well worth looking at. Um, I stuck one of the Sarah Owings um, relaxation uh, videos on the, um, okay. uh, In the um, chat. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a great skill for all dogs to have. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 If we don't have burning questions, let me show that final slide just so people will see what they'll be getting. And I think, Nicole, the slides will be sent out, will they? We certainly designed them so they could be. Um, Nicole's muted. So we have <laughs> contact info for um, your dog's friend, for Susan and for me. Um, we also have links to the videos that you looked at. And my understanding is that a recording um, has been made as well um, and, and that the link will be made available. And that is all I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. And either of us are, you know, free to, if you want to, cause I know, cause I know we didn't cover all the questions, but. Um, oh, not by a long shot. No, I can certainly hang around. It sounds Susan like you can yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. So does, let's see, Catherine, do you have something to, to close us out with, I think? Yeah, sure. I can do the close out. And then if, if you did want to still answer questions, I think okay. that's fine. But I can go ahead and close us out. Just want to thank everybody for attending the Attention Games webinar. Um, and a reminder, since your dog's friend is a nonprofit, we do rely on your donations to bring you these free resources. Um, you would just click on the donate button located on our website, yourdogsfriend.org, and we'll post the link in the chat box. So thank you again. And thanks, Susan and Marnie. Uh, this webinar was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> oh, indeed. Yes, you kept everything going. And all of our wonderful demo people. I mean, they, yes, you know, yeah. yay you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't have done this without you. Oh, my goodness. No, and yeah. we really appreciated it.